guys, welcome to Travel Chat with Z. We've got a lot more information today regarding NGOs placement on the travel ban. And it's a bit dicey because it's now a case where there's a lot more information about where Nigeria has wronged America with regards to sharing of information the right way, where apparently according to the US State Department of Homeland Security, um, Nigeria hasn't been great with sharing information from the passport end with the folks who do travel into America. So the past uh, few years now, Nigeria has been having uh, documentation being handled by a third party company before it goes to the American end. And they like, no, like, it should be a case where from Nigeria should be handled directly by the Interpol. And then the Interpol then sends all the information to countries that need to know what's going on regarding the people flying in and out of Nigeria. And so that's been a major problem according to the US Department. And so the uh, Nigeria was warned and was asked to change this uh, system and have it become a case where it's been handled directly with the Interpol. And Nigeria wasn't listening, so um, we were placed on the ban list based on this information according to the US Department of Homeland Security. Now, um, the ban is on immigration into America from the overseas end. So Nigerians who are in Nigeria, wherever in the world, I want to gain access to America and come in as an immigrant, not, not in the case of, oh, I'm going in to go travel or for a quick business trip and whatnot. It's more of a case where you're going into America and you want to um, be a permanent resident, you want to go move in with your family who are in America, and all of those things, they've now been, they're now on the ban list, and so we don't have access to that as it is. And so, so it is for Nigerians who maybe they've gotten a job in America, and they're now in the final process of getting their um, visa to America to start working in that company, so that's going to be a problem for them, because that's more of an immigration visa level. So going, like moving to America for a job, you are now on that immigration level, and so if you just got a job in America, and you plan to move next month, you have like, to move very soon, and you don't have a visa to move yet, you most likely wouldn't get a visa to move at all. Whereas if you've gotten a visa before this ban got put into place, you're fine, you're great, and you're good to go. From what I read, from February 24th is when the ban will be fully put in place, but then we just got a lot more information about what it would entail and who it would affect. But then, in reality, the like many people are saying that oh well, it doesn't really affect many people like that, like we're all exaggerating and so on. And so a case where according to um, the news, it shouldn't affect the non-immigration um, visa. But then reality is, for the past uh, three years now, since Trump got into the White House, there's been a steady decline of non-immigration visas to Nigerians. Um, so in 2017, the year he came into um, power as American president, um, we saw a decline of 9,382 people who didn't get visa compared to what they got last year. So in total, about 159,001 people got visa to America, they got issued visa to America. But then a year prior to that, it was 168,383 people who got issued visa. So there was a decline in the number of people who got visa into America. Now, in contrast to that, in 2015, there were 143,430 people who got visa into America. And in 2014, there were 129,329 people who got visa into America. I got these numbers from the US Travel State Government website. So it's all like under, they have their PDF file that shows you the numbers every year for who they gave visa to, country number in total, along with the immigration numbers and the num the NIV and the IV numbers. So um, we have all of those information public. But yeah, so for the number of people that were issued to be started, there's a steady decline in the numbers. And um, the highest to date were, it's a preliminary number. It may change, but this is just simply the numbers they've gathered up to date as of today. The numbers are 78,996 people got visa last year. And 32,219 people who got it prior to. So about 53,223 people reduction in number of people that didn't get visa. So I'll put the numbers on the screen for you guys to do your own, to see and see what. Within Obama's time, there was an increase in number of people, um, pretty much, yeah, all throughout his time. Whereas when Trump came into power, it, it just pretty much declined all the way through every year. So between 2017 and 2018, the number declined by 9,382 people declined to 26,782,000 and then to 53,223. And then going by that number also, based on the refusal rate they have online, um, refusal rates for Nigeria jumped up to 37.47% in 2018. 2019, it jumped up even higher to 7.20.20%. So it jumped from, and then now comparing that to Obama's time, where the average was about 35%-ish, in the average of the number of the refusal rates per year, it jumped to 67.70 percentage. So, yes, people are saying that the like, ban shouldn't affect non immigration visa, but in reality, the numbers do not lie. It has affected us even before the ban got put in place. Nigerians have seen less access to America since Trump came into America, and so people should not fool themselves because who are really worried more about are the students. Because I know that many people who have been going to the embassy for the past year, for the past two years, have been saying that they've been having problems getting visa. 
people who have history of getting an American visa to America who in the past had the Dropbox access about you, we know your history with America, you can simply the Dropbox system and not queue to be interviewed by our people, you know, just skip that instead. So that got dropped last year. And in that happened, many people who used to have the American visa access didn't have any more. And the numbers online were the larger number of people who don't have access to American visa like they used to. And then that's for those who just go in there for tourism or for businesses. Now, the major one I worry about are the students, where um, I brought up the birth tourism ban that came up also just last week, and now we have the one with this um, immigration ban on Nigeria. So the birth tourism ban was a bit more general that affected countries that were not in the visa waiver program with America, and so Nigeria is not obviously part of that because we need visas to go to America. And so Nigerians now are now in a much worse scenario than we used to a month ago. And so, yes, we already have issues getting visas to America, but then now it will be much worse, where Yes, it's not for immigration, but then the fact that even with before the bad immigration visa happened, we already find it difficult, how much worse would it get now? And so students who plan to move to America for a four years program or whatnot, and you know, and they have the school admission uh, documents, all of that whole thing, the fact that we've been seeing a steady increase in the number of people who can even get visa within their own program, I wonder about that. I wonder how many students got denied visas because the refusal rate doesn't really show what category of uh, non-immigration visa are you know tallied this simply shows the total non-immigration visa refusal rate and so it will be interesting to know who else and how this affects students and then also i called up a few friends who um, work in america nigerians who work in america and they work with the work permits and many of them um, are lucky enough that they're on the on the right track for the green card um, they shouldn't be affected by this according to the lawyers but then those who live in america and are not quite in that um, in the green card system yet and maybe they've got a few more years to go to get into that system and uh, maybe in a month they'll need to renew their work permits it's quite unclear as to how this affects them because i've read in some parts where it says those overseas is what is who are affected by this and um it's when according to my friend who called up his lawyer to ask about this his lawyer said it should be fine it should be okay but then you never know because what you said is okay today today may not be the reality next week so uh, we're not quite sure how this affects the Nigerians who are working in America uh, using the work permits and uh, Nigerians who are in Nigeria about to get the work permits going to America. This might mean they have to look for jobs elsewhere and simply let go of the American dream. Um, well, it's not quite clear yet, but then because the work permits falls on that immigration visa, it simply probably means that they just won't get accepted into America's uh, visa system. And so that's sad. That's that's kind of soul crushing, really, in my opinion, where you already planned out the future, you can already see your picket fence, your nice home, your family, like having a better way of life beyond what Lagos has to offer, and there comes Trump saying, oh, hell no. Now, on the flip side, what I've been, what I've been reading is that there may be a chance where Nigeria would get pulled off the ban list, because since this news broke out, Nigeria has then said, okay, well, sorry about that issue with Interpol. We plan to start working with Interpol directly and are changing the system to allow for access within the Nigerian passport system directly to the Interpol system. So as people are traveling out of Nigeria, as if, as if our passports can scan, all of those information, our history, you know, like just like a case where when you go to, uh, when you go to most airports around the world and like you're going through that um, security check, Interpol pretty much like lets every country know what people are up to in their country, if they've been flagged for thefts in a different country, if they are barred from the country. So all of that information allows um, countries to share information across uh, borders, and that way you do not accept a thief or a murderer into your, into your country unknowingly. And Nigeria has been trying to, um, has been working with a third-party company, I don't know why. And so um, the fear that America may be bringing in um, criminals, terrorists, as Trump said, um, I guess it's real because really and truly, I don't know why Nigerian government wasn't really sharing the information they asked for in the past. And so they plan to fix that now and have it be a more open system where background information on the on Nigerians will be shared with the Interpol and um, many information has been withheld through the third party system that's, well, may have been withheld through the third party company will now be more visible to Interpol. And so every problems that anybody may have on their documents and their records will be flagged and be told to Interpol. And so I guess that's fair because other countries do the same thing. And so why is Nigeria doing the same thing? You gotta protect your borders. And that's a very fair concern. So according to the news, if Nigeria falls into falls in line and resolve this issue, we may be pulled, uh, pulled out of the ban list, may. Um, there has been no confirmation on if that will be the case. But then in line with the issue that came up last year regarding the 
US visa for Nigerians and Nigerian visa to Americans reciprocity issue where Nigeria was charging Americans a lot of money for the visas come to Nigeria and America had told the government several times that hey if you hit us with a very stupid fee we will hit you back and you will hit it because we have very few Americans who come to Nigeria but we have thousands of Nigerians who come to America so who's going who get hurt more you or I and so after um, months and years of back and forth and Nigerian not budging on having the visa fees for Americans be common sense level. America hit Nigeria with a fee, I think it was like about $99 or something, just to uh, apply for the uh, visa. And it was like a very long um, list of different things they hit Nigeria with. And immediately, once America did that, Nigerian governments and officials woke up and then they changed the fee they charged America. And once that happened, we were back in the green. So this is not a confirmed information yet, but this is what is going out in the interweb. In the WhatsApp world, in the cable.ng also said the same thing. So I don't quite know if that's the truth, but then according to many news sources, that's what they hope the reality will be. So let's see how that plays out. But then in the meantime, yeah, I'm mean, Nigerian people tend to find parts to country to go to to immigrate to. But then obviously Canada hasn't seen many influx of Nigerians in the past couple of in the past decade, really, not a couple of years. So that's not a bad thing. And then even looking at the immigration numbers of people who go to America every year. Well, it's not that bad actually. So in 2014, about 7,201 people moved, got the visa issued to move to America. Um, about 9,020 people in 2015 and 2016 got their visas issued to um, for America's immigration visa. In 2017, it went down though. It went down to 6,297 people, and then it went back up for a little bit to 8,018 people. As of as of last year's number, it's still showing me zero on the um, US on, on the travel.state.gov's website, and so that might get updated to a different number. But of right now, it's just showing zero, and that's a preliminary number where it's still subject to change. So this, these numbers for 2019 are not the um, final numbers. So just be aware of that. Although for the refusal rates, that according to their website is the final number on that. But then for the visas issued for last year, it's still being um, collated. So we'll see how that ro rolls out to be. But then yeah, what do you think about this visa ban issue for Nigerians moving to America? Do you think that's a great thing for Nigeria? Because in, on Twitter, I've been reading, oh yes, now Nigerians will sit in their country and you know work in their country and do better in their country. And I'm just like, my guy, how far? <laughs> Like, are we not in the same country? Are we not seeing what's happening in the same country? Are you not aware of the options we have available to us? To us? Where many Nigerians who moved back to Nigeria 10 years ago, they regret that now. Many folks who were young in school and moved back here and said no to better job opportunities in America, they regret that now. Because here's why. You move to Nigeria, and you say, oh, I want to come and build and help create a better Nigeria for the future generation. And you come in into a country where there's so much corruption happening everywhere, where the entry, the, bar the barrier to entry into government space is very, very interesting, where you find a lot more of the older people who were in power decades ago, before I was even born, are still in power right now, where there's like a whole cycle of corruption happening year to year. He's either the same person or his child or his daughter or his wife. It's just a very interesting way of life over here. It's this circle of people are still like transferring the power around the country. And so at what point will you be able to break through and make it a difference, make it, make it a different country to live in? Um, many folks came in and said, you know what, I don't plan to come into the government space, but then within the business space where it's, it can be a bit more impactful by creating jobs to a lot more people within the local economy. Well, the factor comes into place where the government doesn't really give a crap, give a shit about anybody. It's more about the bottom line, making that money. And so from the tax government area, local governments, local taxes, LIRS, FIR, people, well, you shall of them just come to you and hit you with a bill. And so over here, you have many who just simply suck out of it and just simply drain you of every cash you've saved to help you start your business off. So yeah, we have many leeches back in this country. Fact. But then I'm a realist, so I won't lie about things. So many people will say, oh my gosh, you got your Nigerians, not your country, help your country, story, story, story. Let's be realistic here. Very few who are here are able to make it. And when they do make it, it's a pretty good story to tell. They tell me about the horror stories they went through. And um, most times because they had a very solid social support, familial support that helped them out during those tough times. And they were able to break through it as, you know, after a long period of time. So it's not even like this. It's not, it's not the easiest place to um, start something up. Facts. And so I'm rambling on right now. That I spent a whole day talking about SME issues in Nigeria. But yeah, but overall, for the immigration visa, um, that, let's see how that rolls out to be and let's see how many people it does affect in reality because I really do hope that there will be exceptions made for those job acceptances to come to American companies that, that you know, they like changing jobs and they have things already set up. But then from the way it was worded, I don't think they will allow them to go to America to get that whole thing done. I believe that one journey in Nigeria and you haven't gotten the visa to leave the country to go work in that company, you're kind of already screwed. So good luck. 
and hopefully other countries that offer similar jobs will accept you instead and will grant you visa into the country instead. But until then, ciao and let me know what you think about this whole US visa ban for Nigeria. Do you agree with my point of view? I know I'm sometimes a bit of a cynical uh, perspective about things, but then I'm a realist and so I, I won't lie about this thing. So I'm just pretty straightforward, take it as you will. But yeah, that's it for today. And so I will have a video out next weekend on my Thailand experience. It's a really long video-ish. I'm just trying to work through how to properly edit my video for that. But then it's coming. It's coming. Thank you. Subscribe! <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's do it again. Okay, so are you following me yet? Are you subscribed to my channel? Have you hit the like button? And the notification button? If not, kindly do so right now. I beg. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Subscribe. <laughs>